Here's your scenario. Take a moment to read it over and then let me know when you're ready to proceed. Okay, I'm ready. What position is your patient going to be in for the surgery and what considerations are you going to take for that? This patient is going to be positioned in the lateral decubitus position with the bed maximally flexed. In this case, the left side is going to be down and the right lung is going to be up since that's the operative side. In terms of positioning, I want to make sure my IV axis is established prior to the positioning of the patient. And I also want to make sure that the airway is secured so it doesn't move while we're positioning the patient. In terms of ventilation, the dependent lung, which is down, is going to have a harder time being ventilated because it has pressure from both the bed as well as the bean bag and as well as the abdominal compartment, um, whereas the lung that's up is going to be more easily ventilated. However, there's going to be more blood flow to the lung that's down, so you create a VQ mismatch based on the positioning. How do you plan on isolating the right lung in this case? My plan would be to use a left-sided double lumen tube. What's the average size for double lumen tubes and when would you use a right-sided double lumen tube? The average size for double lumen tubes are 39 French for males and a 37 French for females. Right-sided double lumen tubes are a little bit trickier to place based on the anatomy of the right upper bronchus. However, you might prefer to use them in situations where there's a tumor involving the left main stem. What are some advantages of using a bronchial blocker? They're typically placed through a single lumen endotracheal tube, so patients who have difficult airways or have smaller anatomy, this would be easier to place than a double lumen tube. Also, if you're planning on keeping the patient intubated, you wouldn't have to switch the tube out at the end. After you've positioned your patient, the surgeon asks you to isolate the right lung. How would you go about this with your double lumen tube? So knowing I'm using a left-sided double lumen tube, my bronchial lumen is going to the left main stem, and the tracheal lumen is what's ventilating the right side of the lung. So after ensuring that both cuffs are inflated, I would then clamp off the tracheal lumen to basically stop ventilation to the right side of the lung, and then only ventilate the bronchial lumen, which is going to the left lung. The surgeon puts his camera in the right side of the chest and notes that the right lung is still inflated. How do you troubleshoot this problem? I'd put my fiber optic bronchoscope down the tracheal lumen to ensure that my double lumen tube is in the right spot. When you look with the camera, you're unable to see the carina because there's a balloon cuff in your way. What do you do now? This cuff is most likely the bronchial cuff and what happened was the tube likely migrated backwards. So what I would do is go down with both cuffs and under direct visualization with the fiber optic scope, advance the bronchial lumen into the left main stem and then inflate the bronchial cuff to make sure it's below the carina. You've successfully isolated the right lung. About five minutes into the case, you notice that the patient starts to get hypoxic to the high 80s. How do you troubleshoot this problem? The first thing you wanna do is turn up your FiO2 to 100%. Next, you want to confirm the position of your tube by going down with a bronchoscope to make sure it hasn't migrated. You also want to make sure you're applying some sort of peep to the dependent lung, somewhere around 5 to 10 centimeters of water. If these don't work, you're going to want to communicate to the surgeon to ask if there's any times in the surgery that you can ventilate with both lungs, or if you can apply continuous CPAP to the non-dependent lung. In rare, severe circumstances, the surgeon might have to clamp the right main PA.